and say hi and see everybody. You're more than welcome. Um, we wanted to give everybody the opportunity if you wanted it to be off just, you know, for privacy or whatever, um, that's completely fine. But if you want to turn it on and be more interactive with us, you absolutely can. So thank you for joining us today. Um, one quick housekeeping thing so that I don't forget because I will. Brooks Hill is here as well. Say hi, Brooks. Hi, guys. If you have a question throughout any of this, please feel free to ask. Um, just send it to myself or Amy. Say hi, Amy. Hi, guys. <laughs> and we'll be sure we answer your questions. If you accidentally send it to Brooks, that's fine. She'll uh, let us know. If you send it to everybody, that's fine too, because probably people have a lot of the same similar questions. Um, so we'll just go ahead and get started. Um, I am sorry, my daughter just walked in, so <laughs> I want to make sure she didn't need anything. Um, yeah, you work get really well. personal here. <laughs> yeah. So thank you guys all for coming in. I'm Jenny. I'm a physician assistant at Azura. If you haven't been in or you haven't met me in the office, um, we also have Jesse and Amanda who are also PAs, and we also have Amy that's here with us today. She's just going to introduce herself here in just a second. But I'm a PA and I have been, we've been open four years as of yesterday at Azura. So we're at our birthday, we're having our anniversary. So thank you guys who've been with us and who have joined us. But I've been working in aesthetics for about 11 years. I've been a PA since 2002, working just in aesthetics for about the last 11 years. Um, I also teach um, kind of all over as I work with a company. Um, I do private training, but I also um, work with Metastetics just to do some teaching for them. I don't do quite as much as I used to do just because owning the business and um, you know, still seeing patients is tough, but we still, I still kind of travel all over and do some teaching. So I'm actually gonna show you a couple slides that they've given me permission um, to show you that's actually from Metastatics from when I actually teach. So that's enough about me. Amy, you wanna say hi? Hey guys. Tell us about uh -huh. you. Yeah, well, you know, Jenny and I, uh, I just jive with Jenny, and she's got an amazing practice in Carrie, and she's allowed me to work with her uh, for the last year. Super excited about that. Um, I've been a nurse injector for about 15 years. I am a certified plastic surgery nurse, as well as a certified aesthetic nurse, uh, which are board certifications that you have to take as a specialty. So when uh, people talk about master or advanced and different things, you know, that certifications come with a little more um, education and certification um, testing. So anyway, um, that being said, I've worked in plastic surgery for the last eight years in Raleigh. I'm originally from Michigan and have been with uh, Azura, like I said, for the last year and just learned all kinds of new tricks and, and things with Jenny and the team and love them. So, so excited to be here with you guys. Yeah, Amy works with us mostly on the weekends, um, so we're very blessed to have her come be with us and stick needles in us and stick needles in her <laughs> and have fun going back and forth. It's always fun when we work with um, other individuals because we learn from everybody as we're moving along and we pick up tips and tricks from everyone. So, mm -hmm. all right. Like and I said, if you're just... If you're just joining us, make sure you send your email to Brooks Hill, um, who is on this as well as a moderator, and she will make sure that you get the email with the um, $25 for as a thank you for joining us here today and learning a little bit about botulinum toxin. So I'm going to talk, um, we're going to show you some before and afters, we're going to talk sp about specifics and how many units and those kind of things, but I wanted to give you just a little bit of background first. Um, you know, Botox... One of the number one questions that Amy and I and Jesse and Amanda, you know, we always get is, the, is this, what is Botox and is it safe and um, is this an, a newer thing and how am I going to look? There's all kinds of questions that wrap around when we do our consultation. So we want to take the opportunity today to kind of go through some of that with you. Um, it was, there's a physician that really kind of started as the pioneer. Um, his name was Alan B. Scott. And um, he was trying to find a treatment for strabismus, which is um, an ocular condition where um, there's um, some twitching and movement of the eye. The ocular muscles don't um, quite tend to work correctly. They're over contracted in one direction or um, weak in one, in one way. So um, he was doing some studies knowing that botulism toxin can cause some um, neuro effects and inhibit some um, muscles from being able to be used. So started doing some very limited studies. He actually um, was working with animals 
um, to try to see if he could correct the extraocular muscle movement um, in, I believe it was monkeys or apes or something like that. And that was um, back in the 70s. And so through that process, I found that he could actually correct some of those muscles um, strategically in certain areas. And it was first trialed on humans in 1978. And this is before Botox um, was used for cosmetics or anything back in 1978. So it's been studied for a very long time. So very safe, very uh, efficacious. And then um, it was actually published in 1980. Um, it was, uh, there was a landmark um, publishing done on this. And so it really in the 80s started to take off on using botulinum toxin for use with um, muscle issues. And then there were two doctors from Canada, Carruthers and Carruthers, husband and wife team, a dermatology and oculo uh, specialist that teamed up with Scott to really kind of make progress on figuring out what we could do with these muscles and how we could um, really inhibit, inhibit um, making them you know, work correctly and making some overactive muscles or underactive muscles try to work better for us. Um, and that came along you know, through the 80s. And then actually in 1986, before we had Botox, um, there was, I believe, I don't know, Amy, if you remember, I think it was um, Oculinum and was actually the name um, that was uh, given to the, the medication and it was used for strabismus. And then it actually kind of lost um, a little steam because they didn't meet all the requirements. And then it finally got um, FDA approved in 19, I believe it was 89, somewhere in there to start being used. The nice thing was, is that for us, for cosmetic purposes, it also noticed that a lot of things in medicine we find are, you know, found by chance, right? So these patients who are getting the medication for ocular issues, they also noticed that like the glabella lines were not as prominent and cosmetically things were starting to look better. So more testing was done um, in this genre. And then Botox was the first um, type A neurotoxin that got an actual approval in 2002. And then we have, you know, since then we've had four other or three other that are FDA approved in the United States to use. We have uh, Botox, Dysport, Javo, and Xeomin. Xeomin came out before Javo. I think Xeomin was 2011 and uh, Dysport was 2009. Then Javo just got FDA approval in 2019. And a lot of people are like, you know, which one should I use? You know, they're all neurotoxins. They all work well. They're all good for cosmetic purposes. You know, which one should we use? There's very slight differentiations um, between the products, but they all basically work the same. And Amy will probably agree. Um, it really comes down to more of like the injector, um, how it's being used, how many units, where it's placed. Um, there are some slight differences um, in the molecular size of some of the products and the proteins. I'm um, talking about chelodeltons and Botox is, you know, 900 and, um, you know, Dysport is 500 and 900. So there is some molecular differences at the cellular level with these proteins, um, but it's very slight, but they all have the same mechanism of action. They all work the same. Um, fair enough, Amy, I think. My favorite thing about Jenny is she's super science-based. <laughs> Sometimes we all get a little bit lost in it, including me, so we all want to let you know that there is some substance to the backing of this medication, which is why we always uh, make sure that we don't want to mislead anyone that, you know, right. Botox is obviously something that is an amazing cosmetic treatment, but it's also a medicine, so we have to make sure that the person that you're, you're getting your treatment from has that knowledge and, and knows how to, you know, utilize that medicine because it, it really is still medicine. So right. that um, Jenny is, is a PA that can provide that. Me as a nurse, I can't even um, do Botox without a guide of a mid-level or a physician to tell me that, uh, that I can inject it. So it, it's, it's really important who you pick as your injector and know that they know that. So just that being said, uh, mainly, I pick a, a neuromodulator, you know, Javo or Xeomin or Botox or Dysport based on skin type, sometimes based on gender um, or that strength of that muscle. So it, it, the science is behind it, absolutely. And then it kind of comes into play where, you know, when you go in and ask for a certain brand, because it's like Kleenex in, in tissue, we're all familiar with Kleenex, or I'm sorry, tissue, but obviously we'll, we'll call everything uh, Kleenex because it's so branded. So when patients come in and say they want Xeomin, great. Um, can you tell me why? Is it based on your experience or is it just, you know, because you've been branded that? 
and it's like going into your physician and asking for an antibiotic. I, I want to treat you with what I think in my experience would be best for you. And that's how I pick uh, a filler or, or um, a neuromodulator. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, kind of just going through all of that information, just because it, it does give a little bit of history and it, it is, you know, showing that it's been studied for a long time and it's safe and it's kind of neat. And I am kind of nerdy like that, like knowing all of those things. Amen. But, um, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah. Yeah. And um, it's just, but it really comes down to the difference in the products that we, I always tell people all the time, you know, if you start with Botox, you love Botox, get Botox. You know, it's, it's great. If you want to try something else, um, you want to try Dysport, try Dysport. Um, there's ZMN and um, Javo is the new one. Like I said, um, a lot of times I'll just say, you know, which one has a special right now? Which one has um, Botox has brilliant distinctions and you can get points with that. And Dysport has a, a Spire and you can get points with a Spire. And so sometimes the companies, they like to, competition is good guys. We love competition because it helps price control these products. And so a lot of times they'll come out with a coupon. It's $50 off this or Botox, um, Amy, you probably agree. Like they did their most brilliant promotion last year where, you know, you got $50 off your first treatment, $50 off your second treatment, and then your third treatment, you can get money off a of filler. And then the fourth treatment was you got like so many, your average units up to 15 units free, you know, from um, Allergan. So that was like the most brilliant promotion to try to keep people brand loyal onto that product. But does that necessarily mean it's a better product than, you know, Discord or Javo or ZMN? Not necessarily. Um, everybody re does respond a little bit differently to different products. So, you know, if you want to try one and then try one the next time, you absolutely can. Um, there are sometimes, um, you know, I, this kind of list where we get really real. Disport tends to last a little bit longer for me. Um, that's for me, but I've had other patients say, don't give me that garbage, <laughs> give me something else. And, you know, why, why is that? It's just everybody's body is a little bit different. So I tell people that, you know, just because one thing works better for one person doesn't mean, you know, it's it's going to be the same for you. Um, it really comes down to, I think, a lot of times the injector and knowing, you know, what really understanding what someone wants out of their treatment and then delivering the appropriate amount of units that you need for that area. Mm -hmm. um, if we recommend that you need 10 units of Botox or Javo or ZMN or 50 or, you know, um, 30 units for um, Dysport, then that's what you need, you know. Um, it, Sometimes, and I'll say sometimes I'm wrong, um, but for the most part, if we're trying to get a nice uh, result, we've, Amy and I and other injectors around, we've worked with these products for a long time. We, we really know, you know, typically what someone is going to need. Um, it is always better, in my opinion, to, to kind of go on the lighter end if somebody's nervous or they're not sure how they're going to respond, or let's say they have a heavy brow, we go a little bit lighter. But that doesn't mean that, it, you know, if you come back and need more units, that doesn't mean that it was a bad treatment or it wasn't the right product for you. It just means you need a little more units. And so we have to, you know, go in and maybe touch it up or put a little bit more in after about two weeks so we can get the look that we actually want to achieve. Um, you know, some patients, so Botox is indicated for glabella, forehead, and crow's feet. Um, and, you know, they say, you know, everybody, it was FDA approved at, I think, what, 20 units, Amy, for the glabella was, is yeah. the standard. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, some people need 15 to 16, some people need 25 or 30 in their glabella, but there is a standard dose. And so that's where your injector, knowing you and knowing the results that you want, really kind of comes in to figure out how many units you need for the look that you want to have. Mm -hmm. Um, just because somebody needs 20 units doesn't mean that you might not get a nice response with 15 or you may need 25 to 26. Um, you can layer any of those products too. You know, say I'll, I'll sometimes look at a patient and they come in for Dysport and they come back and I, I, I have a preference for Dysport with people with, with blue eyes and don't take that as science. That's just my experience in a, in a pattern that I've seen has worked for me, but that does not mean that you know, Botox is bad or, you know, different things like that. I just have a preference for Dysport with people with blue eyes. So I, you know, say a patient comes in for Dysport, I will inject them maybe as a touch up in the forehead for just a lighter touch with Botox, just because I have uh, a little more control with Botox uh, with a, a unit or two. So, you know, if we layer a product of a different kind, sometimes there's been questions of why, and, and it's really just a matter of a light touch here and there that you can use, you know, all four products if you wanted to together. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. One of the questions I sometimes get when people have done their homework and they've, they've Googled and they researched, they'll say, well, I read that, you know, Botox has more spread and, you know, it doesn't, you know, people are, you know, I'm afraid because I don't want to use this product. that's going to spread and it's going to cause my brows to droop or my, you know, lids to drop or something. You know, it has to do with the molecular size. Again, that's kind of where the, the nerdy part kind of comes in with me. Um, it's, it's not so much that it, you know, it's, again, it comes down to the, the injector. You have to know, you know, if I have my hand here, if I inject Botox right here, I know how much it's going to spread. It's going to spread probably about a centimeter around that area. If I inject Discord, maybe it's going to spread about one and a half to two centimeters around that area. So I, you know, I, I know that. And, and that's a good thing sometimes. Like what Amy was saying is sometimes like with, you know, red crow's feet or certain areas, we might want to get a little bit more, you know, soft appearing, a little more spread in some areas than others versus when you're talking about your light touch with Botox. Maybe we don't want, you know, we want it to stay exactly where we want it to be. And, you know, that doesn't mean that we can't use it. Yeah. It's so important. I think that that's why the, the follow-ups, you know, I do a two-week follow-up on all new patients. I know you do as well. And I think the other girls as well. But for me, it's about, you know, making sure that you know, your, your injector understands your anatomy. And the best way to understand that is consistency. You know, that first injection is not a crapshoot of sorts, but with your particular muscles, it, it, you know, we really are honing in on just experience. And it's really important to, you know, go see your injector consistently and, and have them listen. And if they're, you know, if they're listening, you guys will get it right together. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> they all work. I love all the products and, you know, um, you know, it really does come down to your injector and making sure that you guys have the, you know, that you're on the same page, that you're really communicating what you're looking for. Um, it comes down to, um, you know, what, how, what kind of a look are you, are, do you want really working with your injector? The best injectors are the people that, you know, really take the time, you know, do before and after photos. Before and after photos are great because we can show you your results, but it's also for me, um, it's, it's something that if you have to come back and you need a touch up, it doesn't mean that we did a bad job or whatever. It's just, if you, there are certain areas, I want to be able to mark those muscles exactly where you were still pushing. That's maybe your right brow is a little stronger than your left brow. And so I, I want to make sure I take that picture so that I can make sure that I get it 100% right on that second treatment. I always kind of joke around and tell everybody when they get Botox or Discord, I always say Botox just because it's the easy one to say, but of course, yeah. if I say Botox, it means <laughs> all of them, any four of them. But when we inject, um, it, I always say you're going to really like your first treatment and you are going to love your second treatment <laughs> because the muscles, you know, when we first treat you, the muscles are like the, you know, we're injecting something that that causes this inhibition of these neurons to, um, it's selectively stopping acetylcholine and, and you know, we're um, again, getting into that, you know, kind of scientific, but um, we're telling these muscles don't move and these muscles and these nerves, they want to communicate, they want to connect, that's what is normal. So when we're injecting and we're blocking um, this response, the muscles at first are like, what just happened? Like what's, what's going on? And, they over time, you know, tried to get back together. These little sprouts on the nerves kind of start reaching each other again. And then all of a sudden you have movement back. It's one of the beautiful things about these cosmetic treatments is that they're not permanent. You know, it would be nice if we never had to see a forehead line, but um, you know, they're, they're not permanent. So if you did have an outcome that you, you weren't exactly a hundred percent pleased with, we know that it's going to wear off. And so um, there's no long-term, you know, permanent issues with any of these um, toxin treatments. Um, so, but after you have kind of trained your muscles, if you're a hard furrower, I don't know anybody on this call, if you, um, ever, you know, really when you're concentrating, if you're really listening to my, me right now, look at yourself in your video. And, you know, if you're really furrowing, <laughs> Lisa says guilty, she's a furrower, um, furrow for me, Lisa. Yeah. So if you're listening and you're like really concentrating, you're probably furrowing just trying to really understand what Amy and I are saying. And over time of doing that, you're making that habit. You're making yourself furrow. You're making yourself, you know, those muscles are creating. And then it, over time you go from, you know, when you furrow, you have these lines that are dynamic lines. Those are in motion because you're making that motion. But then over time you start to see them at rest and those are called static lines. We see those at rest. You don't even have to furrow anymore and you can see those 11s or those furrow lines. So when we're using the um, toxin treatments, 
we're basically telling them the you know muscle not to move and we're training we're putting it into training to not move it's just like going to the gym you know if you were to work out and you were like doing bench presses and all these you know bicep curls and you're training these muscles to get bigger over time um, and they look nice and, and enlarged and you're strong but then you just stop working out eventually your muscles kind of go back to being um, weak and smaller so we're basically doing the opposite of your workout you're doing the workout all the time on your face <laughs> and we're telling it to you know take a chill you know don't move around so much and make these lines so um i'm gonna take a look just real quick amy if you have anything to say i'm gonna look at these questions that are starting to come in to make sure that we don't miss anything on this one yeah uh, it's always funny because when i came down here you know from from michigan it was it was interesting and thank god i'm down here from Michigan, by the way, if you've watched the news. Uh, but that furrow is not a word I use. I say scowl. So as soon as uh, it's, it's so different uh, on what people, you know, try to, try to do in a different word. So I say scowl and people may frown down here. But if you try to furrow or scowl on demand, try it at home because I'm telling you, it is not easy to do. You think like, yeah, I should be able to do this. And you're like, Am I doing it? <laughs> Am I doing it? And especially after you get Botox, you habituate out of that frown or scowl. And then you are seemingly more approachable. That's the beautiful thing about Botox is that it's not that we're all about vanity and wanting to look better. It actually is proven that you feel better because you look better. And you, we find that aging can sometimes make you feel like you're disappearing. And I think that we will find with some of these cosmetic treatments that they actually make you feel more face forward out, you know, doing whatever you're doing. And it makes you more approachable. You know, I've had a, a patient come in and say, you know, the janitor came up to me the other day after her first time Botox and she, and he said, you seem so much happier. It's not that she had changed her demeanor. It's just that she looked softer. So there's a lot to be said for that. Um, Brooks, do you want to show that first slide? I'm going to just skip the one I had, but if you want to just show that first slide of areas that can be treated, um, Brooks is going to kind of share her screen. Um, we want to just kind of give you an idea of the areas that we can um, take care of. So while she's pulling that up, you know, one of the areas we've already talked about is that, that furrow or the scowl in, in between the brows. We, this is the glabella and there's a complex of muscles here that, that push together. Um, with the procerus and the corrugators, and they actually push together to, to make that, um, that muscle move and to give those 11s. And it also depresses, it pulls the brow down when you do that. I can't do it much because I'm pretty fresh. I got a little tox right before I, you know, this whole COVID. <laughs> <laughs> like, yay, for a little I while. I think Lisa had some too, didn't she? She looked amazing. Yeah, Lisa's got a little bit of movement. She's had a treatment recently. So we'll, we'll yeah, she looks good. It. <laughs> let's see let's see all your faces come on show me that scowl i know right i want to see i'm gonna try to share my screen this is only the second time i've done this so fingers crossed um <laughs> here we go oh wait and we're we're all just <laughs> yeah, we, you can also treat your forehead. So Amy and I both have bangs, but when you raise your brows yeah. again, I'm pretty fresh. So I really don't have a whole lot of wrinkles going on up here, but this is the frontalis muscle. Brooks, if you can, yeah, I didn't want you to hold this because um, the frontalis muscle is the levator. It lifts your brows up. And so we um, tend to get the, the horizontal lines that kind of run across. And that's from that motion of the frontalis. Um, we also, because the, the brow lifts up, when we treat the frontalis, Amy and I and other injectors and Jesse and Amanda in our office, um, we, we don't want to knock that function out completely. Um, Brooks, if you can advance to the slide with the, the face with the areas, um, we don't want to necessarily knock your frontalis out completely because you want to be able to, even though I have a, a block and no wrinkles, I can still move my brows. You know, this is important. You need to be able to make some expression. Um, if we knock out the um, frontalis muscles, actually, this is a good before and after picture. Um, he's in the middle oh, picture sorry, here. Go back. Yeah, that's fine. You can go back just to show real quick. And then, Whoop. you know. I'll get a hang of this in a minute, guys. Bear with me. <laughs> <laughs> you are doing great. You get an yeah, A. But, absolutely. You know, these lines here in the middle of the glabella, um, I'm like pointing at them like you guys can see me pointing. But mm -hmm. in the glabella between the brows and then the forehead lines, um, up above, they run horizontal. It's kind of cut off in this picture. That's the frontalis. We can also get a brow lift. You can see on the right side, it's pointing to her brow. Um, we can actually get that muscle to pull up. If we treat the glabella in the center, that helps. To, like when I furrow, you can see my brows pull down a little bit. So when we treat this area, it actually helps to elevate the medial aspect 
of the, the brow, the inside aspect of the brow. And then that lateral where that blue arrow is pointing on her um, eyebrow, we treat this lateral aspect and it actually gives a little bit of a lateral, you know, a lift on this side to get a little bit of a brow lift out here. Um, it's okay if we just do this area and lift up, but I'm not a fan of just doing a little bit here and getting this lift here unless somebody has a higher glabella area that they're not dropped because then sometimes they'll get a little bit too high on the outsides and then it's not complementary to the middle. So do you agree with that, Amy? Do you try to? Yeah, I think, um, I think everybody comes in and they, they want to say that they, they want their forehead lifted. And so they think that Botox is going to go into the forehead. It will actually, Botox or any of the other neuromodulators will work the opposite way of what that muscle works. So these guys in between your brows depress down, Botox will lift them up. Although we like the lift that we get from a natural muscular movement, we don't want those lines. So we have to soften that down and Botox will quote unquote depress that. But with the right artistic injection, you're just gonna get a light touch. So we reduce the wrinkles without you know, knocking out the movement. So just as a side anatomy note. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then we also treat around the eyes, the crow's feet um, area. There's one little arrow that's going under her lash line, the mid pupillary area. It says, it says jelly roll. This is something that, you know, we can put a teeny couple little tiny drops of Botox right under the pupil area. And it just kind of helps to soften this area. It's not going to get rid of if you have a, um, a larger fat pad protrusion underneath the eye um, where that fat is actually kind of shifted forward and separated, you know, the cheek separates and then the fat pad comes forward. It's not going to get rid of that completely, but we can try to keep the muscle from pulling up. I've got a little bit of a jelly roll myself. This hasn't been treated in a long time, but if I put a couple little units of Botox or any Dysport, anything, again, just saying the, the Kleenex of the, the, the four, um, it just helps to get it to kind of smooth out a little bit and not push up as much. Um, we can- Jenny, that the preventative in that, even when you have, you know, Jenny's young, obviously. And so if you would add a little bit of Botox in that little jelly roll now, it will help keep that muscle you know, somewhat in skin tighter to keep things kind of compressed down because as we age, that elasticity of the skin and the muscles start to shift and change underneath. But if we can keep it as tight as possible, that's where the preventative measures come in with the injections. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. We, we try to prevent things before they become a problem for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we can do um, the bunny lines on the side of the nose. Mine haven't been treated in a while, um, but that's the, some, sometimes people, when they furrow, they instinctively, when I furrow, I don't necessarily bring my nose up, but um, when you furrow, a lot of people bring the sides of their nose up. And if we treat the glabella and get this nice and smooth, and you're still trying to furrow and you know, you're not having motion there, but your nose is still pulling up, it looks kind of, kind of funny. So when we do your um, evaluation. We're looking for that when you furrow, if you also draw your nose up, we want to make sure we treat those bunny lines. And even if you don't, if you start to see the wrinkles in the side of the nose, we go ahead and treat those. They're called bunny lines because it's like, you look like a little bunny when your nose scrunches up. Um, so <laughs> you like that? It's supposed to be cute, but it's not when you're 40. Yeah, it's not so cute when it's on the nose. Um, I don't treat very, it says nasal flare, I kind of yeah. just added this in. I don't do that very often. Some people, if they, they become hypertrophic a little bit, the muscle becomes a little larger because they're always flaring their nostrils. Um, you know, that's an area, and some ethnicities are a little bit, you know, different with that, but um, that can be treated. Um, the nasal tip underneath the nose here, if you have a, you know, downward turn nose, we can try to get the, the tip of the nose to kind of pull up a little bit. I do some of that. Um, gummy smiles, this one's, um, you know, pointing to the corner of the nose. That's actually this little area down here um, on the side of the nose. When you smile, a lot of times people smile and their, their lip kind of just rolls under and you can see all the gum um, above the teeth. And so if we want to try to make that muscle relax a little bit, we can treat the gummy smiles to get when the smile, the lip stays down a little flatter. Um, we can put a little bit of Botox above the upper lip to get some of these uh, wrinkles that when you pucker, you know, to try to get these muscles um, to suppress a little bit, not be as strong. But I always tell everybody with the smoker lines, even if you're not a smoker, the vertical lip lines or um, lipstick lines is a little nicer to call them that. Um, Botox will make the muscle relax, but it doesn't actually get rid of all the lines that you see if you have them at rest. That's where we will use some lasers or we'll use some dermal fillers to kind of actually fill in the depressions of where you have those little deeper lines. And a um, large amount of a dose of prevention before they yes. come. Absolutely, just a little bit. And you know, hard to get rid of with everything, absolutely. Yeah, and we don't use much Botox. And, and I guess we can talk about how many units we use. Um, we, Amy, even if you want to run through that a little bit, I'm like, um, after I get through all these, with the DAO, the depressor um, muscles in the side of the mouth, you can kind of pull your mouth down. This makes the marionettes look a little more um, prominent. 
the dimples of the chin. This is probably one of my favorite spots to treat. I love treating the chin. You get that little orange peel look, you get the little dimples in the chin. Um, I've been treating, uh, you know, kind of sneaking that in on some of you guys who are my patients now, just because I can see it coming. You're st starting to get the little dimples in the chin and um, the Botox helps to kind of keep it smoothed out. And then um, we'll talk about the Nefertiti lift and the platysmal bands here in just a second. But do you want to kind of give a run through, Amy, about how many units you would need? Yeah, you know, that's, I think, everybody's question. You know, how much is it going to be? You know, obviously, with, like Jenny was saying, the programs that we have and the, the you know, the um, price points and stuff, you know, are generally about the same. But, you know, everybody wants to know price points of everything. But uh, unit wise, we like to, you know, some, some areas in the country in different states, sometimes we'll go by different areas, uh, say they, they might do the forehead, they might do the crow's feet, they might do the cabela, but they might lump those all in, into one uh, and, and not necessarily talk about, you know, how many units you have. So don't be surprised if you go into different offices, but in our practice, we actually talk about per, or every area has, has units. So in the forehead, you know, I'll generally run between maybe 10 and 12 units. Obviously we're gonna touch up in two weeks if need be and go light, like Jenny said, you know, crow's feet um, between the brows, that's gonna, you know, be between about 15 to 25 units. And I preferably, you know, I don't really find a big side effect of using 10 units as a pretty good standard for crow's feet for most people. If they have that um, lower brow or a lot of activity there, I'll generally just put in 10 units. And I think that's the recommended dose there. And that's pretty much standard for me. And oftentimes you don't really need to touch up. A lot of times those, you know, finer lines will come down through the cheek. We have to be careful about how, you know, um, medial or towards the nose we go with that Botox. So, you know, those are all things that congestion can, can occur if you add too much, but I always find that 10 units is a pretty standard dose for me and probably the rest of you guys, eh? Yeah, anywhere. I mean, if I'm doing just a light kiss around the eyes, maybe six to eight units of a light treatment, and then most people need anywhere from 10 to 12 units um, around the eyes. Now, this is, again, talking about Botox, Zeem, and, and Javot. Discord is about, you know, two and a half to three times the amount, um, which is why people, um, they sometimes will get into this little match of, about, well, over at this other place, I, I had Discord and I only had 20 units and I had a complete block on my eye. 20 units of Botox, Javo, Xeomin will definitely, you know, do the trick. Um, but when we're talking about Discord, because of that smaller molecular size, we were, we were talking about um, kind of how it shifts around and it has to do with kilodaltons and all of these things and how it, how it spreads. Um, we're going to use two and a half to three times the amount. So if we're talking about Discord, we might use 50 to 60 units around the eye. But again, the pricing is a little bit different. Um, so it really comes out to the same price at the end of the day and you're checking out at the front, but it's just about how we dose it. Um, so I would compare the Dysport and the Botox or the other neuromodulators to, to like Tylenol and Motrin. You know, they're, mm -hmm. they're different dosages, but they have the same purpose, just kind of different mechanisms. But um, yeah, so, that, you know, a standard dose for, I think, most people is going to be between 35 and 50 units, depending on, you know, sometimes your activity, your skin. Uh, I don't really go by age because I don't really care how old you are. I'm looking at your skin. I'm looking at your activity. That's, that's basically, and, you know, what, what that would determine out to be is, is going to be dependent as far as the price points and any particular practice, as well as, you know, the specials and different things that everybody's got. So, you know, I would say between 35 and, and 50 units. And that would include between the brows, the forehead, the crow's feet. And then obviously as we dose into the lower face, um, that's just gonna be, you know, yeah. a different Lower thing. face, we use less units because, you know, we don't want you to not be able to smile. We don't want you to not be able to express or your, your mouth, you know, when we're treating the upper lip, it could be anywhere from, you know, two or three units to maybe six to eight units max, you know, cause if we put much more than that, sure, you don't have any fine lines, but you also can't move. So that would be a bad thing. Um, the chin, I might put six or eight units and that's it. Yeah. That's that lip flip that everybody talks about that, you know, we've been doing for years, but all of a sudden it's taken, right. uh, it's taken hold and all of a sudden people are asking about the lip flip, but that Botox is what, uh, in the, in the upper lip, that's what Jenny is referencing is, is the two to three units that's very tiny that averts that lip just a small amount. If you get too much in there, which I've done it, uh, I think most injectors have on certain patients. If I put in six units on somebody that just including myself has, uh, it takes effect very well for me. I can't say my B's and P's. It wears off in a couple of weeks, but it drives me nuts, so. <laughs> yeah, I say this is not the time to have, you know, try to be, you know, drinking soup from a spoon in the first couple of days. Therapist, no, Botox in the lab. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> um, do you want to show some pictures, Brooks? We'll get to the next one and just kind of start going through it. Yeah, sure. And if you guys have questions, please feel free to ask. So this is one of my patients, a male patient. Um, the first picture is before and after at rest. You can see that in that top picture, he's got a little bit of that static line that we were talking about. He's not, you know, super old, um, but you know, he does have a line at rest. And then um, as you see in the second slide on the top, that's in animation when he's lifting his brows up. And then um, in the third picture, that's when he's furrowing. Um, so those are all before pictures. And then on the bottom, of course, you can see his afters. His forehead, I placed 14 units of Botox across. Um, and I think, yeah, he actually had Botox for his treatment. Um, 14 units across. And then in his furrow, he had, I think, uh, 24 units. He's very strong. He's male. He needs a little more units. And I think that his treatment came out pretty perfect for what he was wanting to see um, for his results. This was his first time treatment, and I was actually pretty happy with it um, because he's got a lot of muscle movement in that forehead, and I was just like, let's make sure he doesn't come back with, like, scary brows or, you know, because it, it didn't want to over-treat him. He'd never had it. He's a guy. Um, he still wants some expression, and so um, he was pretty happy when he came back and couldn't believe how nice and smooth his forehead looked. Um, the glabella, you can see, still has a little bit of a crinkle. Again, I wanted to maintain a little bit of that movement for him. Um, any more block, I think that it just would have looked, you know, it would have been too much. He might have even started to feel heavy in the brow. So um, that was, we did it. I did a good job with that one. <laughs> Jesus. Sometimes we're our best complimenters. You got to be confident in this. Realm. I know, I know. But I really thought, and I told him, I said, when you come back, I'm going to have to put a few more units in your forehead. Your forehead is just, you know, very expressive. And I really thought those above the lateral aspect, the, this area here coming up, I really thought he was going to still have some movement and some push out in that area. And luckily he didn't. But, and if he would have, it would have been fine. Because again, it, it we, we'd rather not create you know, give you too much of a block and not like it or have heaviness in your brows or heaviness, you know, that make you feel heavy in the lid. Um, that's worse. I can't make that go away necessarily. It has to wear off. So I'd rather have you come back and put a little more in if need be. And that's it on that one, Brooks. Um, very similar um, treatment for this patient. And she is very unique and interesting because She's got a lot of little lines all the way across. And so when we treat this type of forehead, you know, some people have one or two lines across and that's it. And then other people like me and this patient, it's like stacked coins. I mean, or just folding laundry. You know, they're just line, 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 line. Um, and that's from the, that frontalis um, muscle. You can see in her first picture, she has a little bit of those static lines, very young as well. So these lines start pretty early. It depends on how you express. I'm a brow raiser. So I had a lot of lines when I first started getting um, treated. And that's when I was 32. And <laughs> this is me. I need you. Amy says, that's funny. <laughs> um, yes, yes. So we treat that. Um, you can see in her after picture of her forehead, she lifts up. You notice right above the brow and the lateral aspect, the very far side, she has that little crinkle. I call those commas. I have it too. Um, you know, I don't know if you guys can see it, but these little crinkles right here in the side. Um, those, you know, we talked about treating that if she wanted. If we get too low in that area, then what happens is the, the brow actually starts to depress. And so we have to pick our battles. Um, I don't think that looks bad at all. She has a little bit of a line there. My preference is to not chase after those lines unless they're very distinctive or if the commas are higher. If they're higher, they're fine. But when they kiss the brow like that, we start chasing after those, you know, we lose that brow lift ability and we actually start to get some, you know, dropping of, of the brow. Um, she has a little bit, if you look in the very middle of her forehead at the top at her hairline, she's got a little bit of, um, a little bit of wrinkles left there when she lifts. Um, I believe I treated her, I meant to look her up. I think I treated her with about 13, 14 units, um, in her forehead. And so she still had a little bit of movement there. We decided, I think, to just let that go. It looks completely natural. It looks fine. But if she wanted to get a little more block up at the top, I maybe would have put two units. The thing with the frontalis is the little bit of the, the kind of anatomy science side of me coming out of me again, is when you 
your frontalis muscle, it, it, it splits right here. It, it's called a bifurcation. So it splits right here in the center a little bit. And so when you lift your brow, it pushes up against this dead space. And so we can't always get that to suppress because there's no muscle there. And it's just where the muscle kind of goes up around it. So some people have a bifurcated frontalis that literally comes down in the center of their forehead. And so when they lift and we treat them with Botox, they'll always have a little bit of this U right here in the center. And it's very difficult to, you know, get that that to go away completely. And that's where that first time consultation comes in. I mean, it still looks fantastic. We still treat it, but it's that expectation is that it may not be completely perfect because of the way your body is built. Everybody's muscles, everybody's a little bit different. So, and then her glabella, you know, on the, the bottom where she's furrowing, she's got kind of that mean furrow. Her, you notice that when she furrows, her brows pulled down and it kind of closes the eyes a little bit. And then, um, so that's one of the things we want to try to treat to get the brows to kind of even out a little bit. This was her first time treatment. Um, so when she came back and you see the glabella, there's still a little bit of push there. You know, she decided not to treat it. I agreed with her. I'm in the school of thought that I like a little bit of motion. I like a little bit of movement, but um, you know, some people wouldn't like that, you know, and that's fine too. We could just put a couple more units in there and maybe give her a little stronger block. But I think for a first time treatment, like I said, she really liked her first time treatment. The second treatment, she's going to love because <laughs> the muscle is going to be even more, I and mean, she loved it anyway, you know, honestly, but um, the muscle, that glabella muscle, each time that we treat it, if you treat and retreat in three months, we're training, again, we're telling that muscle, don't move, don't move, don't move, and we're breaking those bad habits that we all have, um, you know, furrowing and pulling those muscles together. Any questions on that picture? Let me see, I got a... I really, that you can lift the brow with neurotoxin, not many places know how to do this. Yeah, so we, we can lift the brow. Um, you know, not everybody will lift. And that's, it, Amy, you agree, like some patients, you know, and that's part of your consultation is that you, you not, some people are just, their muscles, they've suppressed, they have the, they've lost the elasticity, the skin is loose, and we can't get them. I mean, they, they won't lift much. Um, the goal is obviously never to have them drop. Um, and we don't want to lift everyone, especially with men, we don't want to feminize them, but because they tend to be flatter anyway. Um, but we treat the glabella to get the medial aspect of the brow to lift here, and then we treat the lateral aspect of the brow to lift here. Um, and it only takes a couple units in the lateral brow. Um, there's a, a ridge that we look for, the frontal temporal ridge, and anyway, but, um, you know, and to try to get you to lift. <laughs> There's that science girl again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think, so, I think um, really important just to add into that too, Jenny, is that you can tell that she's super slight all the way down. That thin skin is going to matter on that neuromodulator of who I'm going to use. You can tell that she's thin skin. She's probably a thin frame. She's got thin hair. She's got thin veins. She's just thin all the way down. And she's almost automatically a Botox bot for me. I don't know what you right. used on her, but she's a Botox girl. That frontalis is so busy that I can't believe that you ended up getting as, as a nice result on that first treatment. It's pretty impressive Yeah, because that 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 forehead muscle goes all the way across and to not make her heavy in her slightness of, of yeah. her skin and, and such is really hard to not, you know, get her to be, you know, too drawn down or caveman like, and, and it really still has nice lift. So yeah. yeah. And, and a lot of times with these first time treatments that that lateral aspect of the frontalis, that outside area is where we need to touch up because all of us injectors, we don't want to get too far out there and then you get heavy. That's, that's miserable. That's worse. I'd rather you come back with a beautiful smooth center and a little, and I need to do little tweaks on the side um, because that's, that's better <laughs> than, the, than the opposite. So I think that's just why we have to make sure and in, in your injector, whether you have us or somebody else, you know, you always want to be in activity and in, in what we call repose. And that's just a, uh, a still um, picture of what you look like and making sure that, you know, your activity looks as good as it does when it's still. You want to go to the next one, Brooks? So Amy, this was one of my patients too. What do you, what do you think? Mm -hmm. That is on the opposite end of that girl previously. It's crazy. What thick skin? Holy cow, that thick vascular skin that's oily, that is, you know, just, just as hard as the, the other girl was. Now, now he's an automatic disport for me because of that thicker, oily skin. Yay! That's what See, I use. That's why we like to play games. We got to make yeah. sure that we're on the same page here. Yeah. 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 It's amazing. In 
Yep. And so static lines at rest in the forehead um, and very kind of thick, stronger male muscles in the forehead. Um, I did use Discord on this patient. And you can see in the center picture before and after when he's raising his brows, you can see those lines I was talking about, the, the lateral aspect where you can still see some of that motion when he lifts up. And again, first time treatments, we don't necessarily want to overdo it. Um, don't want that area to get heavy. So I did go back in and make some adjustments on that. And then the furrow still has some furrow, significantly better, super happy. And I can say that this client um, has been with me for a few years now and um, just keeps getting better and better and better and better and not needing treatments as often. And the skin is just remarkable now. And you, I could show you forehead now to this, you know, four year, three and a half years ago, you wouldn't even know it's the same person. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm just going to stop real quick for a question. Um, I have a patient on here that said, do you prefer yeah. Botox over the new, newer neurotoxins? Do others last longer than the Botox? And for me, I, 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 <laughs> I have to be honest, I do have a preference for Botox and Dysport. Jenny might um, disagree or, or have um, I need to chime in for on that. But for me, I have a preference only for Botox and Dysport and not because the other two don't have a really solid standing. It's the education uh, in time that sometimes gets, gets me uh, in a tricky position. So if you are super unfamiliar with a uh, Jabot or um, Zeoman, Botox and Dysport is kind of going to be my go-to only because of the branding. It's kind of what people already know. And that doesn't mean that we won't sit and chat about it. This is why Jenny and I are doing this particular um, conference, because I think it's important that we get that education out there first. So those other two names also stand as strong with Dysport and Botox. It's just a preference for me that I generally, because Botox and Dysport have been around longer, but the other two have a super strong standing uh, with patients. Yeah, oh, and you know, Javo has an FDA approval for glabella lines only, which is the furrow, not for the forehead and not for the crow's feet. Does that mean that I don't use it there? Of course I use it there, you know, um, but it, it's, it's just they're, they're not going to go after those indications because it's another FDA approval and it takes time and money and it's a newer, it's a newer um, product. So they just haven't done those studies yet. And they may do the studies on those areas just to get the approvals, but it's kind of like, why? You know, they don't necessarily have to, in my opinion, um, but it does give that, you know, Botox and, um, you know, does have the FDA approval because they have done the studies and they have been around for a long time and it's been kind of the tried and true. Um, and so it does have the most research behind it, you know, backing. Um, so it's, you know, they, they do have other approvals that other neurotoxins don't have. But again, does that mean that you can't use them in those areas? No, you absolutely can. It's just they, they don't have those FDA approvals and that's just because they're not, they're not going to go after it. It's too expensive or they just haven't been on the market long enough to, you know, get the approvals yet. So, but they still work. And we're going to use it. off are going to use it. <laughs> <laughs> it all over the place. Good questions though. Good questions. And the next picture, Brooks. All right. So this is my patient who, uh, obviously has a lot of activity and her personality looks just like her face. She's busy, animated, and always like that. The Botox has definitely tempered her. And I think as she's uh, gotten that consistently, it's almost like her, I, I haven't subdued her, but she certainly isn't as body animated, even with the muscles uh, in the face having been a little more subdued, but she has a lot of asymmetry. Uh, you can see that she pulls up a lot on her right side of the brow, um, and that is, you know, so I, I want to touch base and just real quick. I don't know if I can probably point this out as, as well. I'm going to try to explain it, but I like the actual brow to be, well, in, in general, cosmetically, you're supposed to have a one inch um, from, from the medial brow, the inner brow, and it's hard for me to get off this, the science and anatomy speak sometimes. So from the inner side of your eye to the arch should be an inch and then should be about another inch from the arch to the lateral tail or the outer tail of your brow. So it's really an artistic injection that we want to make sure that that arch of that brow comes at the lateral side of your, your iris, the color of your eye. So I had to be super careful and make sure that she didn't get too heavy. Sometimes I see patients that they come way too far out laterally or to the sides and your arch is beyond, you know, your, even your uh, wider show of your eyes. So 
it's super important for Jenny and I to make sure that that, that um, kind of feminine appearance, especially for her, actually has aesthetic appeal to make sure that the art is in place, not just to get rid of the wrinkles. So she got a great result and she was a Botox patient um, and she comes in every three months for me. Uh, mm -hmm. with and I just want to compliment you that she, her right brow is so strong. What we were talking about earlier, like really assessing the patient is you, you don't inject the right side the same way you did the left. You know, I mean, it's not, it's not like a, she's super asymmetric. She's beautiful, but she, she's got some asymmetry. And then when you treated her, her, her brows are near, her right brow is ever so slightly off from the left brow, um, but it's, it's significantly better. And that's what we're trying to go for. Symmetry and balance is always the answer. You could have treated her left and her right the same way, but her right would have still been up higher than the left and been completely asymmetric still. And so it just absolutely looks gorgeous. She looks great. Yeah, yeah. She, thank you. Yeah, she's she's a great result, and that's that's what we hope for all patients to have is to in even the roundness of the arch. I want to give a little more peak, not not such a round kind of baby face um, angle. I'm you know, and myself, and I know Jenny is too, all about the angle of the face and really truly the brows as well as other areas in your face is about an angle, and we have to make sure it blends with your face and really your personality. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Sounds weird, but it's. You have to you have to come in and, and let us talk to you about that because it really is a, a weird psychological thing behind it that we connect those products to you. <laughs> did you treat her um, bunnies as well? I did. I was going to uh, point that out. Yep, sure did. It's so funny that because you know as injectors we we see things immediately and so <laughs> so like did you you did treat them right because they look fantastic. <laughs> she was but this is an example of you know when she furrows she scrunches her nose. And so yeah. you've got to treat that. If Amy would have treated her glabella and didn't treat her bunnies, then it would have looked silly. She would have had all that motion in her nose and nothing that, you know, up between the brows. So yeah, good, good, you. good job. job. Great job. Thanks, girl. Mm -hmm. So this is one of my patients. Um, we did just crow's feet, just really soft and subtle. Um, I think I used some um, Botox on this patient and she doesn't have significantly deep lines. She's just got lots of little tiny lines when she smiles. And so um, even though she's kind of looking down on the first one and, and kind of straight in the second, you can still see that, that um, dynamic movement there. She used, I think we did about eight units on each eye. So about 16 units total. So just really pretty, um, kind of softened in, came into that right to the, the corner of the eye here, kind of came down, put a little bit in this area to keep her from bunching up in this corner. Um, and that worked very lovely for her. So she got a little brow lift too there, Jay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, injected her a little bit high in the brow to get a little bit of a brow lift. Um, so yeah, she's kind of like a, a slam dunk type patient. You know, she doesn't have a lot of lines at rest. She's very pretty. Her skin is good integrity. There's not a lot of laxity. Um, I could put a little bit or a lot in there and she's going to get a beautiful result. So um, those are kind of the, they're like, yay. <laughs> Yeah, are, yeah, that's beautiful. Her skin looks amazing. It's funny how the skin just improves. It's not just the wrinkles reduction. It's the skin that improves as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Who dat? <laughs> one and only. That's Brooks, the one controlling the pictures. <laughs> um, Amy, do you want to talk about this one? Yeah. So, you know, again, that, that nice crow's feet, just tiny start of that, you know, from the crease out is Brooks was starting with that. And just, you can tell that it's just soft in that smile. And in Brooks is more of that preventative, it bothered her. So Jenny injected her with that Botox and it really just is going to keep her skin from having what I call scar like wrinkles, you know, that dynamic activity it, with that skin constantly, you know, contracting and, and releasing will cause scar like wrinkles. So uh, she got a great result there. And I'm sure Brooks can tell you that she's really happy with that. And then the other area, if you look under the eye, that jelly roll that we talked about, this is a good example of just sneaking a little tiny bit in there to really kind of help keeping uh, this area a little smoother as well. So just kind of snuck in a little unit on each side to kind of help her smooth that out a little bit. It makes a nice difference. That's her best compliment right there. I mean, that's what the compliment probably that Brooks got. We're not, people will come in and say, I don't want to look different. I don't want to, I don't want anybody to know no one will know. You'll know. If you're looking to come in for somebody else to know, you're probably not a good candidate to get these injections and you may want to think about something else. But for this, you know, the injections are about 
small differences that make you look like your hair looks different and better, or you've got great makeup on. Nobody can quite put their finger on, and that's that's the result that we're looking for. Yep. So Brooks is not super strong. She doesn't have super deep lines, real natural look, but she's just kind of showing you an animation. Um, you know, her, her kind of results, the difference of her before and after, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looks great. So this one, you know, we had a question earlier about the difference with Botox and Dysport and Javo and so we had a little bit of fun um, at Azura back in January and we, we had our patients um, email us if they would like a free treatment. So who wouldn't want a free crow's feet treatment, right? So it didn't matter if you'd had it done before, um, if it was a first time treatment or you'd had it done for years, you just could not have had a treatment within three months with any kind of neurotoxins. And so what we did is on one side, we injected Botox and on the other side, <laughs> we injected Javo because we wanted a really good understanding of you know what's going to last longer, which is going to kick in first. Um, do we see that much of a difference? And so, really, it's you know there's it, it, oh, and the other thing was is that it didn't matter if the patient needed only six or eight units on each eye, or really needed twelve to fourteen units on each side. It didn't matter. We gave everybody ten units of Botox and ten units of Javo, and it was really hard as an injector because there were some patients I was like this would be a little better if I use 12 or 13 or, you know, she only really needs eight. But for our like little in-house study that we did, we, we wanted to make it completely controlled in the fact that we did the same thing on every patient every time. We, we selected 10 people and this is just one of them. Um, and basically, you know, from people emailing us in that they wanted to participate in this. And so the right eye is Botox. The left eye is Javo. So, you can see actually her, she's pretty symmetric. Um, she pulls in a little differently. And this is another good example of um, asymmetry. She has very similar lines. She has similar pull. On the right side, she pulls in maybe just a little bit more on the under aspect of her eye, um, maybe pulls down a little bit more on her brow on the right. Her lines are pretty pretty symmetric and in, pretty similar in depth. Um, so sometimes people are really deep on one side and not as deep on the other. And then so one eye responds better, but she was pretty symmetric. So she was a good candidate for us. Um, and then you can see on the right side with the Botox, her uh, after picture is at two weeks. And then the third picture, the pictures down on the bottom, right and left are at three months. So I'm pretty much looking at this going, it's about the same. Um, we had some people say they felt that the Botox kicked in first. Um, we had some people probably about to say they felt that the Javo kicked in first. So um, yeah, it didn't really give us a, yeah, it really didn't give us a conclusive, you know, for, and again, it was just 10 people. We did it in the office, you know, but it was kind of fun for us to do it because we can read the studies from the companies all we want mm -hmm. um, and go by those. And they're, ve and they're very well controlled. I mean, they're way more controlled than what we would do at Azura. Like I said, you know, just mm -hmm. only having 10 people. I mean, you need a higher population to really get a good study, but um, in different injectors, but I was the only injector did all of the, all of them so that we could see the difference because everybody injects a little differently. And I think that the results go to show, um, and somebody just said for me, the Botox for sure kicked in first. Yeah. We had a lot of people, you know, we had some people say, yep, the Botox kicked in first and other people say the Javo kicked in first. So, um, but I think if you look at the three months, so we started this in January and then, at three months, we wanted to have everybody come back for pictures and then insert COVID, right? So we're at that point where we're getting our three month pictures and we're like, oh, well, we can't bring you in to do it. So this patient was kind enough to send us her pictures. She took it home, her little selfie pictures. So, but still looking pretty good at three months. So, mm -hmm. um, and I can't remember that's if this patient- Isn't that what that? Juvo, um kind of touts as well that they actually have found that it kicks in sooner? I think so, yeah. I don't know if that's legit. I'm gonna to have to go back and look at that, but I feel like that's one of the things that they actually could um, advertise. Uh, yeah, I'll have to double check. Which metabolically, everybody is different. I, I can't yeah. say that. You know. Yeah. That's not but easy. she, um, you know, she she was pretty happy, and I mean, still looks pretty good. So, can we say one side worked better than the other? 
Exactly. I mean, they look pretty similar. And for most of them, of the patients that we saw, we saw everybody back at two weeks because that was part of the deal. If we're giving you a free treatment, you have to commit to coming back. <laughs> so um, <laughs> everybody looked pretty good. I think this was a, was that another one from the study that we did? Yeah. So that was your, your baselines. And this was another one. Um, again, she's a, you know, we injected, um, again, everybody got the same amount, no matter how much we felt they needed. She still had a little bit of push on both sides, but again, Botox to Javo, pretty similar, you know, and that's at the two week mark with, um, we haven't been able to get a, a three month update on this um, picture, but um, pretty similar, you know, right to left. And they that both eye aperture is somewhat, is, is more open. Mm -hmm. I mean, on both sides. So you can appreciate, even if it's yeah. The wrinkles are softer, but the, the eye opening is, is mm -hmm. what everybody likes too. And if we weren't, you know, doing this in-house controlled kind of thing, we, I probably would have done a little bit more to give her a little more brow lift. Potentially I might've kind of snuck under a little bit um, to get some more lines underneath. But again, we were doing the same exact amount on everybody and doing the same injection points on everyone. So, mm -hmm. um, but I think that that's pretty good. It looks pretty similar. Yeah. Looks great. So this is my patient. She's a little more subtle, uh, but this is also only after her first treatment. And we did Botox in her master muscles uh, with that. And she happens to be Asian. So that Asian population likes that slimmer jawline. Um, she was the right candidate for this particular procedure. So we added about 25 units of Botox to either side. Uh, some people uh, also get this uh, when they have uh, that, with that TMJ. Um, we don't necessarily treat TMJ. We will inject the master muscles to slim the jawline, but uh, TMJ is a, a whole other uh, issue of sorts. But she did come in particularly for a cosmetic revision of that. And actually, I wish I had the third picture because this is at six months because uh, we have to get some uh, time under our belt to have that reduction of that muscle. Because like with anything else, the contraction and, and the hypertrophy or that build of muscle happens. and. Uh, so we, we ended up getting a nice slim jawline and hopefully I can uh, share that with Brooke so she can share with you all that I do have a six or a, I'm sorry, a 18 month timeline now and she's got a great shape. So, and it lasts a long time. She looks great. Love that. She was super happy. But she definitely saw a huge difference in her whole face just is more balanced. Yeah, she looks great. Good job. And a lot of times people will come in and they'll, you know, be grinders and they have the, 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 the master just sticks out and it makes them look boxy. And like Amy was saying, like you, you want that more feminine kind of cut in. And so we can, we can help to get those masters not be so it's called hypertrophy or, you know, where it's, it's larger, get the muscles to kind of shrink down. And it's super interesting because, um, you know, in some areas, the Botox tends to, you know, or any of the toxins, like, again, I say just that, but any of the toxins, um, will last, you know, only so long in certain areas, but in the masters, it does seem to kind of, you know, last a little longer. Um, same thing with like when we're treating off label or not off label, but non-cosmetic, I guess I should say like hyperhidrosis that lasts, you know, it lasts longer, um, <clears throat> you know, when we treat patients like that. And that's, a, again, that's a whole sciencey autonomic neuron versus, but motor neurons. But anyway, um, you know, certain areas it'll last longer, but um, I got a question here. I think, is that our last picture, Brooks? Uh, no, one more, Chen. Oh yeah, this is oh, a good one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So this patient um, just had that dimpling in the chin and very strong depressor uh, muscles in the corner of the mouth, kind of just pulling her down. And I have this pretty bad too. So I like to keep my DAOs treated, um, but you know, putting a little bit of Botox in the lower face can make a huge difference. I'm really, you know, very surprised that I used, Amy, if you believe it, I used six units of um, wow. Botox in the chin and I used three units on each side of the DAOs and sexy scale. <laughs> Just oh, scale. total. Um, bananas. So 12 yeah. units total in this lower face and made a remarkable difference for this um, patient. And I mean, I just think that that's, I mean, that's, I'm pretty proud of that one too. Those downturn fingers in the mouth, you know, just make, and she has that natural um, muscle anatomy that wants to turn down anyway, so that it's not only just for correction, but it's for prevention for her as she ages. I mean, it's just outstanding. I know patients, you know, or other people that are on now 
who may not have that anatomy, but it's just crazy what a difference that, mm -hmm. that tiny bit of Botox made. And she's young enough that she doesn't really have those deep marionette lines in the corner of the mouth um, too much, a little bit of that downward turn, but not much. But this is again, an example of that prevention. If somebody is constantly pulling like that, just with expressions, and I do it all the time, which is why I'm like, oh, can you believe And I do that? I just make that, that's one of my faces that I make. <laughs> Um, I just do. And so I have to he does. Train, myself, train myself. I do it. And then so I put it in here because I don't want to see those deeper marionette lines. You'll still get them in time because you have volume loss. And that's a fat head thing. That's a different talk for filler discussion. We can do it another time. But um, if you're not always kind of pulling against that area, that's really going to kind of help, you know, um, prevent some somewhat of, of seeing that sooner rather <laughs> sooner than we want. So, yeah. Sexy skull, Jesse. Absolutely. <laughs> I think, is that the last picture, Brooks, or is there another one? No, yeah, that's it. Please do a filler tutorial. We'll get there too, Wendy. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, we, um, I did get another question about platysmal bands. So platysmal bands is another area that we treat um, for the neck. So I haven't treated mine in a while. I think last time, Jesse may have treated them the time before. I think Amy might have treated them. But these muscles here, you can see when I do this, these muscles, I mean, Amy, you just want to shoot these from across the computer. Oh, I can't even take it. It drives me bananas. It drives me crazy. Sure. So these muscles here, over time, you know, they kind of pull out and they can cause some laxity. And so you can kind of see when I turn. Oh, gosh. Somebody asked earlier, do you guys treat yourself? I usually don't treat myself. I make other people inject me because I'm just, the only thing I'll treat is maybe my upper forehead. And other than that, I'm not good injecting myself. A lot of people do, but I don't. So I, I have uh, Jesse and Amanda and Amy do it for me because there's so many people around. Why would I inject myself? But now somebody asked, are we treating ourselves why we're, why we're stuck at home? And I'm like, not yet, but it's getting close. Um, <laughs> so thanks for that question. But we also treat these platysmal bands um, and that just kind of helps to kind of pull in the neck. And that's part of what's called the Nefertiti neck lift as well. So um, there's something called Nefertiti neck lift where we treat the platysmal bands so that we can't, you know, have the muscles not pulling out so much. And then we also treat the chin and the DAO muscles here in the corner for the depressor muscles. And sometimes we also treat the, the masseters as part of that too, if someone needs it. So it's a combination of those things. Each band typically can take anywhere from six to 20 units of Botox. So it just depends. Um, we don't want to overdo that area. Um, but and sometimes I'll actually come down kind of the cleavage lines here. I don't know if you do this at all, Amy, but I'll put it, sprinkle a couple little units across the chest here and that helps to kind of smooth the chest out a little bit. Um, we also treat that with, um, you know, lasers. And sometimes if there is a deep little line, I'll smooth it out with some ZMN or Botox or Javel or whatever. And then I'll go in with a little filler as well. But um, sometimes I'll, I'll, and, uh, reconstitute my Botox or Xamen or Javo, whatever, uh, with a little more saline so it doesn't seep too deep into the muscle and it stays in the skin to reduce some pores. It's a, it's not a long-term effect, but it certainly is that wow effect that's going to give you that wedding weekend ready skin. Say you do it on a Monday by, by Saturday, your skin is, is really nice and tight and firm and it'll last a couple weeks. Uh, it's very small dose. So I, I will do that to reduce the pores obviously want you to do other things, but I do yeah. like that. Treatment. The little micro treatments for rosacea and all kinds of things. Yeah. Toxins are great. <laughs> I know they're, they are. It's, it's crazy how much you can do. And hopefully we answer the majority of your questions. Uh, we know that obviously filler is always <laughs> a want to, to go ahead and do with the toxins. I think they just get so confused and I yeah. wish we could put them together without making them, you know, just layered on, on layered of, of confusion, but it's easier to just go with one so you can see, and that's how we treat you as patients too, is that we layer. I like to, to have patients come in and get their Botox. And then I like to have you come back and maybe consider getting a filler or obviously lasers or whatever it is, because I want you to appreciate the treatment that you're getting from me. It doesn't mean that I can't do Botox or filler at the same time. It's just a matter of, I want you to know that you can put your trust in us, see your differences of your treatments with one thing at a time. And then as we establish a better relationship, then you can, we can start to blend all those things together. But I think for, you know, a lot of you don't know me, a lot of you know Jess or uh, Jenny and Jesse, but I do think that, you know, if you, if you came to know me that, you know, I'm going to want you to establish just with one, um, one product at a time. Mm -hmm. Sure. 
Um, we just got a question from Patty. She said, can we get on a wait list for when you open or are you doing any in-home treatments? Patty, if I could, I would, girl, but <laughs> yeah, you can, about absolutely. <laughs> um, you can send an email to hello at azuraskin.com or you can go onto our website and request a appointment. Um, I believe um, Lisa actually um, is our, she works with our marketing and she's a patient. Um, but I think Lisa, it's down at the bottom. Like they, right now we might have the request an appointment down towards the bottom because the virtual consults are up on the top. Yeah, so I think it's when you scroll down, but you can request an appointment on our website. Supposedly, we're going to be we're allowed to be open on May first as of right now. We're closed until um, April thirtieth. Open May first. I don't know that that's going to happen. You guys are watching the news just like I am. So, um, but we do have some patients on for early May. But what we have been doing, um, Tiffany has been um, going in the office a couple times a day and working on phone calls and emails, and we're scheduling from May fifteenth out. Hopefully that will um, get, be open and kind of getting closer to back to normal. I think that probably when we go back to work, it's going to be staggered appointments type of thing to keep you safe. Um, and you, you know, we might not have every employee back the first week or two, just kind of trying to stagger and making sure that we're keeping social distancing and um, doing what's right for us and for you guys. So but as soon as I'm allowed to open those doors and put a needle back in my hand, I absolutely will. <laughs> but yes, please email us and we'll get you on the list. And make sure that you guys have, um, if you joined in a little later, make sure you send your email to Brooks, who's on here. You can send it privately to her um, because we're going to put a $25 credit on your account. So for saying thank you for joining us on our webinar today. So any other questions for us? Lisa said that it's um, under the get in touch section of our menu at azuraskin.com uh, backslash um, contact and then request an appointment. So you can do it that way. It's kind of buried a little bit since we're, since we're uh, operating a little differently these days. So kind of like getting your payment from the government, except easier. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, ladies and gentlemen, um, if you don't have any other questions, um, we've been talking a little over an hour now. So Botox is so easy to talk about. I mean, I could talk for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. And I know a lot of people can probably listen for hours and hours because it is so interesting and it's, it's super fun. So, um, but if you have any other questions that we didn't get to, feel free to email us at hello at azuraskin.com um, or send us a message on social, me social, mes or social media um, and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible um, to answer any questions that you might have. Love to see you guys follow it up too with, with all your um, filler questions prior to so everybody can address when that does come to be uh, that we can do this again and that um, whether Jesse or Amanda and, and Jenny, but that all those filler questions can kind of come into play and email Brooks or Tiffany either one. Yeah, we have four neurotoxins that we have to choose from. Then when we get into fillers, we have a lot to choose. There's from. a, what is there, a hundred in the, in, the, in the world that are to choose from and thank God we only have four. <laughs> brands right so oh god right oh you mean neurotoxins yeah neurotoxins are, are, yeah fillers yeah. i don't even know how many there are multitudes yeah. but either way no yeah. so thanks so much i appreciate uh you jenny brooks tiffany uh as well as all our clients and we hope you're all well and uh it was really good to re-engage with you all yeah thank you it's really kind of about me and Amy. We just needed to talk to some people for a while. Oh, give so. me a soul here. Yeah. <laughs> it feels good. So thank you. Yeah. Appreciate so. you all. All right, guys. Have a great rest of your day and we will see you soon. Bye.